Hi, my name is Sha and I'm a math and science tutor. Previously, you watched me do the first half of the science section of the ACT. Today, I'll be continuing on the rest of the science section and we'll see how I do. If you enjoy watching these sorts of videos, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you get notified when my next video comes out. Let's get on to it. Alright, let's take a look at the second half of the science portion. Um, so this is production of ammonia. Alright, so let's just go straight to the problem. Um, experiment 1, as the temperature increase, the cycles will. Experiment 1, experiment 1, um, temperature increase, cycles will increase then. Alright, experiment 1, 26 cycles for 450, so 26 cycles, that's right here, for, oh no, for four, for four, for what temperature again? Okay? For, at 450, alright, so right here then, okay, 450, 26, there we go, it's the triangle which is X, T. The movement of hydrogen ammonia, so we're going to go either reactor or condenser first. Let's look. Each trial steps one to four cut fresh catalysts were placed in the reactor. In the reactor, so it's either A or C. Um, and then either the condenser or the pipe mix. So option two, number two, nothing happened. Float through pipe A to the condenser. So pipe A to condenser, it's going to be our C. Consider the results for experiment one for 375 degrees Celsius. Uh, experiment one. For 375 and then what's next all the this were consumed in less than 20 cycles when which catalyst so 20 cycles less than so basically everything except the circle and the circle is w so everything except w so not f and h it's going to be j if a trial had been performed in experiment 2 at 425 degrees celsius so let's look at experiment 2 I don't see 425. Uh, okay, let's just read the rest first. And 225 ATM. 225 ATM. Then, number amount of ammonia produced. But there is no temperature. Oh, the temperature is the key right here. Okay, for well, what temperature? 425. So we're talking about in between the square and the star, which is 200 something to 300 something. 200 something to 300 something that's b all right um at one atm of pressure the melting point is this and the boiling point is negative 33 mm, it's going to be a solid or liquid where based on this i mean do they mention temperature anywhere else are they talking about the negative 50 i guess they must be so we've got negative 77 negative 33 solid liquid gas so it's going to be a liquid because it's in between negative 77 and negative 33. It's going to be J. Alright, and let's look at number 27. Consider the trial in experiment 2 that produced 550 grams of ammonia. So, experiment 2, 550 would be about this one. Okay. Based on figure 1, the number of cycles that were needed to complete the, re complete the reaction is. So, this is at what the circle is 300 we're talking about 300 um for which catalyst four sets of my trials oh this was done with catalyst c so we're talking about the star catalyst c one point something less than five right, let's look at this um something about sound waves and uh, coefficients what is the approximate maximum um, coefficient for 200 hertz sound wave it air for figure one figure one um at 10 percent relative humidity so this is all at 10 percent relative humidity for 200 hertz um so maximum for 200 hertz so the bottom one this looks like this one all right and that would be maximum is uh, three temperature would be negative something so it's going to be f based off figure two the attenuation coefficient for this reaches a minimum at 
Um, okay, so figure two for a thousand cuts, this one. And we want minimum value for the solid line. Um, it looks like it's 40, I guess. So I picked the one that says it's closest to 40, B. For range of temperatures and range of humidity, is alpha for 200 hertz more strongly affected by temperature or humidity? So the bottom one is the 200 one. This one, there is no variation for the humidity at all, so obviously it's temperature. And because the maximum variation for um, this in figure 1, but that in figure 2, which is not true for F because temperature varies more, so it should be G. Took at 31. 1000 hertz sound wave in air at 10% relative humidity. How many of these temperatures shown in figure 1 as alpha? Okay, for which figure? Figure 1 where alpha is 18. Figure 1 where alpha is 18 is going to be right here. And how many of the temperatures at 1, 2, 3, 4 it intersects 4 times? It's going to be C right there. Alright, let's look at 32. Two sound waves are simultaneously emitted from a speaker into air at this. Big figure 2, the waves travel, the intensity level which would decrease. Okay, what is alpha anyway? Alright, um, alpha is the rate where the wave's intensity level decreases with distance as a result. So, basically, um, larger alpha and then lower intensity. Okay, got it. So. If we're talking about 45% relative humidity, which is about here, for what kind of waves? 1001 and 150, then the 1000 would have a higher alpha and the 150 would have a lower alpha. Higher alpha, lower alpha. And then this one would decrease more because the alpha is higher. So, likely decrease at a greater rate. It's going to be the 1100 one because alpha is greater J. This graph for different frequency, how alpha varies. So the particular air temperature is. So they did this at some air temperature that we don't know. Temperature is done, this graph was done at 10% relative humidity. So we should look at 10% humidity then. At 10%, this is 3, this is 9, this is 14. So we should look for the point on this graph where it's 3, 9, 14. It would be about this 3,940. Nope, nope, this would not be 9 then. This would be 3,914 then. It's going to be 0. B right there. Okay, let's look at this one. Okay, just straight to the question. In study 1, the ratio of fructose to glucose as the ratio as, okay, as fructose increase, amount of sweetener solution increase in study 1. Study 1 right here. Didn't talk about the fructose or glucose though. Right here. Oh, there we go. Alright, when the fructose increase, so basically from Q to U, then then what? Then the amount of sweetener solution, then the amount of sweetener solution decreases. So when that increases, this decrease. G. Um in study one, the amount of sweetener solution consumed daily by each rat could be measured because of which of the following steps. Okay, let me read this then. Um, five groups placed in this. Each rat was placed in a separate cage and provided unlimited access to the sweetener and to solid food. This is in a separate cage. Okay. So no, their food was not restricted. They were not placed in the same cage. So um, so we B or D, and they want the amount of sweetener solution. Sweetener solution. And by each rat, B doesn't even talk about the sweetener solution. D is the only one that will work. Suppose there are sweetener composed of 46% fructose, 54% glucose. Based on table 1 and results of study 3. Alright, so what's this? 46% fructose. That would be in between R and S. So study 3. Right here, in between R and S would be between 622, 553, 622 and 553. The numbers... Oh, study 3 is this one. Okay, study 3 in between R and S, 1125, 1279. 
that would be H right here. Alright, consider this claim. The group of rats that consume the lowest amount of solid food. Alright, who consumed the lowest solid food? Right here, group 1. 9. Also has the lowest concentration of leptin. Alright, gotta make sure I don't mess up. So leptin right here. Lowest concentration of leptin 1. Well, obviously group 1 does not have the lowest leptin, so not true. No, because group 1 consumed the lowest amount of solid food, but rats in group 5 had the lowest. Group 5, group 5, let me just double check. Uh, group 5, yes, group 5 is the lowest. It's going to be C. Alright, let's look at 38. Um, which of the following groups of rats should have been included to serve as a control? Only water, only... Alright, so it's it cannot be neither water nor solid food, the rats would die. And actually, by the same principle, it can't be F or G because you have to have both food and water to survive, so it has to be H. Let's look at number 39. Consider the sweetener that results in solid food consumption of 16 grams. Solid food 16. Um, solid food 16 would be group 3. Um, based on table 1, how many grams of fructose? Okay, one second. So, what? Fructose. Okay, that's group 3, which is sweetener S. And sweetener S is 50% fructose. So, 50% of 200 is going to be 100. The experimenter designs of studies 2 and 3 were identical, identical with respect to which of the following factors listed below is either a chemical indicator, home on which the chemical indicator reacted. Okay, it's going to be about the chemical indicator. This was used indicator N, this was indicator P. Um did they Okay, so different indicators and then this reacts with leptin to form blue, this reacts with this to form yellow. So chemical indicate they have what are they identical in chemical none no they have different chemical indicators one's n one's p and then one's leptin and then ghrelin so is there no option oh there we go j neither and that is the entire science portion of the act and that was the entire science portion of the act honestly the entire science portion of the act wasn't exactly what i expected i thought it was going to be like biology chemistry physics but instead it was mostly just data analysis reading the data applying the data to another problem and just answering all the different questions there really isn't much to compare between the act and sat science portion because the sat doesn't even have a science portion However, we will compare between the types of data analysis problems present in both. So in the ACT, the entire science portion, every single question was a data analysis problem, which makes data analysis problems 25% of the entire ACT. Whereas in the SAT, statistics only appear in section 4, and statistics only account for 15% of the problems in section 4 anyway, so the data analysis problems present in the SAT is going to be much much lower than 25%. In addition, in the ACT, each problem has multiple different kinds of tables and they expect you to apply knowledge from one table to another and answer their questions. And each set of data applies for multiple questions. It could go from five all the way to seven questions. Whereas in the SAT, they will give you maybe one or two tables. It's not as many as the ACT. And each data set only applies to maybe one, two, and maybe at the maximum three questions. So when picking your test, make sure to pick the test which best plays to your strengths. And remember to look up the requisites for your college of choice to see which test they require. Thank you for watching this video and if you enjoyed watching the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you get notified when the next video comes out. Thank you for watching!